morning welcome to episode 10 of mahatma gandhi's uh, last uh, 200 days we are following this book written by shri ramurthi ias and translated into tamil by ilakkuvan of uh, tanjavur i am thankful to the alumni of uh, rt84 of national institute of uh, technology trichy and uh, shri city who are the sponsors of this uh, video in episode 9 we saw mahatma gandhi was uh, traveling in a train from lahore to patna and to know the it was heavy rain and was uh, no dripping heavily inside the compartment and mahatma gandhi traveled along with the masses and reached uh, patna on uh, 8th of august just imagine the mindset of a child which was playing with a mud doll and dropped the doll it's just gone into pieces right the child starts crying and it is trying hard to put the you know, pieces together trying to recreate that doll so that it can again play with that doll but it's not possible it is broken now right it's not going to come back the child will cry much more just think of the mindset of a child Mahatma Gandhi was in that sort of mindset uh, on uh, 8th of August. For him, right from his day of birth, just six months before his uh, final day, India means today's India plus Pakistan plus Bangladesh, you know, that whole country. That was India for him. Right? He has lived in India like that. So he has no borders. He is a citizen of India, a citizen of Pakistan, a citizen of Bangladesh. He is a he is common to everybody. That is how his uh, mind will be. But today, to see that within another one week, we are going to get our independence. But independence with a broken country, right? The country has been broken into pieces. Gandhi never expected. Gandhi never wanted this. Nobody listened to him. So he could not stop it. <coughs> so he was in that uh, mindset of a child who has broken the mud doll he arrived in patna and then that evening he has the prayer meeting in patna and when he addresses the people he says british government has behaved like a big zamindar right like a landlord owning the entire land of india you know that the entire big country of india is all uh, british is the landlord for this so in another one week this landlord is going to go but we have smaller landlords you know in india everywhere there are landlords and what british government has done is it has given you no know, license uh, for rifle you no know, to such uh, big shots in each each village you no know, everybody who was in line with the british government they all got the license so they were terrorizing people with that you no know, uh, license what they have got so gandhi says as soon as india gets independence you no know, we need not have any of these landlords i don't want any anybody having the license to shoot people right that is not allowed so it's, it's going to be a free country so that people live without any fear so first thing india indian government should do is to withdraw all this uh, rifle licenses that sort of is uh, talk on 8th of august in uh, patna and from patna he travels and on 9th of august he reaches uh, calcutta so as we know he is moving towards navakali right navakali uh, is a hindu minority area and then the minority have been subjected to a lot of uh, problem you now in the in the hindu muslim rights there so once once before he has he had been there he has solved the problem so again the people there wanted mahatma gandhi to come there to solve the problem so he is going towards navakali so from patna he has moved to calcutta on uh, 9th of august so he is sitting on the banks of ganges and he sees on the other side of the bank on the other side of the ganges he sees uh, you know the majestic ramakrishna mat in belur Now uh, just been built by Swami Vivekananda. So if you look at uh, Bengal, you know, it's a land where uh, you know Kabir Das was living long ago, and then Ram Krishna Paramahamsa, and then Swami Vivekananda, and today Rabindranath Tagore. So all you know great giants, you know Gyanis, they have lived in uh, Bengal. In 1904, when Karsam tried to divide Bengal, there was a big uprising. such a big uprising with a nationalistic nationalistic feeling it was never seen anywhere in india it started in bengal right but today 
Today, the British government is trying to do the same thing. It's dividing Bengal. Now, we're going to have East Bengal and West Bengal. Of course, West Bengal today is one of the states, one of the province in India. Where is East Bengal? East Bengal became East Pakistan in 1947. And then around 1972, it became a separate country as Bangladesh. Right? So one part of uh, Bengal has become a different country. Another part of Bengal is part of, part of India. So this division, right? People accepted it in 1947. The same people in 1904, they you know with all their might, you know, they agitated and they stopped it. Now they did not allow the government to split Bengal at that time. But what is happening you know, today is so many rights, you know, the Hindus and Muslims, they are all clashing. You know, there is a fight going on every day, murder going on every day, right? there is rioting going on every day. <coughs> so the unity is lost now. What happened to all this, you know, uh, the legacy of so many big shots starting from Kabir Das right up to Rabindranath Tagore who is still there. <coughs> so Bengal has changed. You know, Mahatma Gandhi is really, really worried. The people of Calcutta, especially the Muslim leaders, they come and tell Mahatma Gandhi that I have, we are very happy that you are going to Navakali to solve the issues there. But you see the issues here in Calcutta now. Right? At least stay two, three days. Right? Don't rush and immediately go to Navakali. Stay here in Calcutta and then see how we are suffering. Right? Please solve our problem. Nobody is able to solve. Nobody is able to solve. We have appealed to the government. We have appealed to you know, local authorities. We have done everything. But the writing is going on and we are all suffering. So please, you know, the only person we believe is Mahatma Gandhi. We want you to stay back in Calcutta and resolve this issue and then you proceed to Navakali. So at least two, three days you postpone your trip. That was the appeal given by you know, the, uh, the Muslim uh, community leaders. So Mahatma Gandhi sees the situation. He says, okay, I will stay. And then on 9th August and 10th August, both the days, Mahatma Gandhi, he did nothing else. He just walked around Calcutta. In fact, on 10th of August, he was observing Maunavarata. That means he will not utter even a single word, right? Complete silence. Every Monday he does that. Every Monday, wherever he is, whatever may be the situation, he will not speak on Monday. So one day in a week, it's a holiday for his mouth. Right? He doesn't talk. <clears throat> so 10th August was like that. So on these two days, he is just walking through the very, very small streets of uh, Calcutta very poor areas, right? poor neighborhood. On both sides, very small houses, huts. Right? All these huts and uh, houses, they have a very small kitchen and they have a small stove. When uh, people come to their house as uh, you know, their guests, you know, probably they prefer some coffee or tea and then supply to them. Right? So that small fire, that is the only thing they have seen in that area. But now the entire area is burnt down. Right? All the houses are broken, all the Huts are burned down. People have been killed. Women have been raped. Right? And uh, no, uh, all uh, their limbs have been cut off. So much of violence, so much of bloodshed. Mahatma Gandhi is very upset. Of course, he is not going to speak on that day. But tears roll from his eyes. And he is very silently he is, he is walking through the uh, streets. He is weeping because of his love, love for humanity, love for the people with him, love for India. So when everybody sees that a such a great man, Mahatma Gandhi, he is crying, he is just walking through the streets very silently without uttering a word, they just drop all their weapons. The riot comes to an end. The rioting comes to an end in that area. What army could not do, what police force could not do, what the governments could not do, one single man, two days of just passionately walking through the streets, stopped the violence in that area. Remarkable, remarkable achievement by the power of his you know, <clears throat> spiritual greatness of Mahatma Gandhi, his affection and love for people. He won everybody without any weapon, without even speaking a word. Right? Those areas where we went, those areas, completely, they, both the community leaders, they came to him, they said, we will not do this. 
We will not touch any weapon anymore. We are stopping all writing. Right? That was his power. And again, the people of Calcutta, they come and request him. Right? There are so many other areas in Calcutta where writing is still going on. So we have seen your power. Please stay back for one or two days more. You have stayed two days more. You are about to go. Just you are passing through Calcutta. You are going to Navakadi. We asked you to stay for two days. Now we are requesting you two more days. Please solve some more problem. Gandhi readily agrees. He says, okay, this is my job. So I will stay. On 11th of August, Mr. Suravarti, who is the governor of the undivided Bengal, right? <clears throat> he is from Muslim League. He actually had gone to Karachi. Now in Karachi, they are discussing the formation of Pakistan. Suravarti is a very close associate of uh, Jinnah. So he is expected to get some prompt post you know, when uh, Pakistan becomes uh, independent. Uh, they were deciding you know, the constitution of uh, Pakistan. And uh, on the previous day, they had decided that they will declare Pakistan as an Islamic country. Right? No secularism, nothing. Okay, No such uh, drama. We will say very clearly, openly, we will say that we are an Islamic country. So the decision was taken on 10th of, 10th of August. Suravarti was uh, part of it. And he gets a message that Mahatma Gandhi is there in Calcutta. And he is uh, no, uh, attending to all the problems and he is solving problem one by one. So how can we allow this? Right? We want problem to continue. We want writing to go on. Right? This Suravarti was instrumental in creating all the issues in Navakadi against the Hindus. Today he sees that you know, Mahatma Gandhi is praised by the Muslims of uh, Calcutta. Suravarti Naturally, he doesn't like it. So next day, he rushes you know, from Karachi to uh, Calcutta. And he comes straight to Mahatma Gandhi. He meets Mahatma Gandhi. He says, you are a great man. You have solved the problem here in Calcutta. So now you proceed to Navakadi. Right? Don't stay back in Calcutta. People have been asking you to stay back in Calcutta. But uh, don't stay in Calcutta. You Please get out of Calcutta. Almost, you no, know, he did use that word. He says, Navakadi needs you much more. Calcutta, I will take care. No. <clears throat> you please... Uh, Move to Navakadi and you know, maybe you can try your uh, trick there. But uh, no, right now, no more from here. That was his request. Uh, Gandhi says, No, I'm going to stay back. No, two days, people ask me to stay back for two days. So I'm going to stay back for two days. And I will leave after two days, provided you agree for certain conditions. Now we have to see you now what is Suravarti's uh, standing and what is Mahatma Gandhi's standing. If you look at Mahatma Gandhi, even when he meets and you know goes and meets the king and queen uh, you know in Buckingham Palace you know in London, Mahatma Gandhi is just wearing one towel, nothing else, no other dress, one small towel. He is just wearing that and he is going and meeting the king of uh, you know, British Empire, where you know, the sun never sets in their empire, right? Such a big king. So meet him, he goes with one towel. But Suravarti to come and meet Mahatma Gandhi, you know, in, in the you know, the poorest area of uh, Calcutta. He comes with the complete full suit, you know, with, uh, with suit, boot and all, you know, completely very well dressed like a Westerner. Uh, Suravarti comes like that. <clears throat> and Mahatma Gandhi is trying to solve the problem. Suravarti is trying to uh, instigate the problem. It's right? a big difference between these two. But Mahatma Gandhi says, uh, no, I, will, I will agree with you. you know, in two days, I will leave Calcutta. Don't worry. I am not going to stay here permanently and you know, create problems for you. <clears throat> but I want... Uh, Two promises from you, right? One, like I am working sincerely for the Hindu Muslim unity. I want you also to join with me and work for the Hindu Muslim unity. The second condition, I'm going to stay in Calcutta for two days. I want you also to stay with me wherever I'm staying, whatever may be the place, maybe on the you know, street platform. You have to stay with me. Right? Don't demand any facility for you. As I stay, I want you also to stay there. Right? So these two conditions, if you agree, then uh, no, I will leave Calcutta in two days' time. But I am a man, no, I don't fear my life. Right? If, if I get killed, it's okay for me. But you are not like that. So you go and consult your family members and you come and tell me. Right? We are going to live for two days without any protection, you know, almost you know, on the street corner. This is how we're going to leave for two days. If it is acceptable to your family, you come and tell me, then we will try the experiment. Suravarti says, okay, I'll go and talk to my family. 
he goes, he speaks to our family members. Fortunately, the family members also agree. They said, okay, try this. Then Suravati comes back and tells Mahapagadi, I am ready. Two days I will stay with you, uh, in wherever you, know, you are staying, without any police protection and all that. And uh, I will also start working for Hindu Muslim community. I agree for two conditions. Let us try for two days. Uh, so let us see what happens on 12th of August. Thank you. Mm-hmm.